Welcome back to this ongoing course on organic chemistry and biology and drug development. Last time in the last session, we have discussed the various methods of uh, DNA sequencing and also we covered uh, one method which is called which is a part of the next uh, generation sequencing techniques. Specifically, we mentioned the chemistry that goes on in pyro sequencing. Today, we will be discussing the synthesis of oligonucleotides that means, how short DNAs can be synthesized uh, chemically. Okay. Now, to synthesize it as you have seen in case of in case of synthesis of peptides, we have to consider several aspects and that is that in case of peptide because the amino acids have uh, functionalities in H 2 free N H 2 and a carboxy and occasionally also in the side chain there could be reactive there could be reactive groups. So, we need what is called protection deprotection strategy and then once the protection deprotection uh, protection uh, protecting groups are placed on the functional groups either the amine of one component and the acid of the other component, then the remaining amine and the acid functionality of the two amino acids are coupled. Okay. So, that is called a coupling stage. So, basically there are three stages protection, coupling and then deprotection okay. and you cycle this and then finally, through a, a common deprotection step you strip off all the protecting groups from the molecule. Now, initially all the synthesis were done in the solution phase, but later on people realized that solution phase you cannot proceed uh, very much that means, the length of the peptide uh, cannot be made in a uh, very large that means, large number of amino acids. So, Robert Bruce Merrifield he showed the way that he developed the solid phase synthetic methods of peptides okay. and where the amino acids are linked to a solid phase and all the reactions were done uh, on the amino acids that is anchored to the solid phase. Similarly, in case of now uh, the synthesis of oligonucleotide. So, let us consider this that okay, sorry not this one circle. Uh, we first write the structure of a of a mononucleotide and then try to analyze that what are the possible problems and how to solve those problems. That this is the general structure. Now, we are talking about deoxy oligonucleotide because we are not talking about synthesis of RNA, we are talking about the synthesis of the DNA and uh, here the general structure of a nucleoside is this okay. and what we are planning to do is we have to uh, we have we want to couple this with another nucleoside, but the connection between the 3 prime and the 5 prime OH is is basically a phosphate linkage is there. So, so, basically here coupling means the coupling of the these mononucleosides and, uh, but as there are number of OH functionalities very similar to the peptide case. So, what we have to do we have to we need a protection of this if we want a reaction between this and that then we need a protection of this and this should be free or it is connected to a reactive phosphorus moiety and this which then attacks the uh, the phosphorus and there must be some living group attached to the phosphorus and that leaves. So, the principle is that you should have protection of this which and one of the which now this could be in the opposite direction also remember that DNA synthesis takes place enzymatically in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, okay. but in chemical synthesis you have two choices either your 3 prime which can attack a 5 prime active phosphate group 
attached to the uh, 5 prime OH or it could be the other way around that this is converted to a reactive phosphorus moiety and this 5 prime OH attacks the attack the reactive phosphorus moiety attached to the 3 prime OH. Okay. So, these are the two issues. So, now the question is which way the synthesis is generally done. The synthesis is generally done we will go to straight away to the solid phase synthesis because that is the one which is adopted now which is uh, which the uh, always the laboratories make oligonucleotides by the solid phase methods because again I told you because of the advantage of purification and also uh, large number of uh, oligo large number of nucleotides can be added one after another. Okay. Now, in actual practice achha, one more point what about the bases whether the bases also have reactive nucleophilic groups or not whether strong nucleophilic groups are present because if that is present then that is going to hamper uh, this nucleophilic attack on a reactive phosphate. Okay. So, you have to be careful. Now, if you remember the structure of the bases uh, three of the bases contain free amino groups one is adenine that contains a free amine guanus then guanine that contains a free amine and cytosine also contains a free amine. So, these amines need to be protected because they are potential nucleophiles okay? and in fact they are stronger nucleophiles than, than which. So, you have to protect these amines and by the way this thymine does not have any NH2 free NH2. So, that does not need any protection. So, you need also to use protected bases except thymine. Okay. So, this is little bit more complicated than the synthesis of peptides. Okay. Now, the next slide I think this is what is done. So, initially the first the mononuclear that nucleoside basically there is no phosphate here that has the base but this base has to be protected if it is A or G or C it needs to be protected. I will show what are the protecting groups that are used here and then this 3 prime wedge is attached via a, via a linker to a solid surface to a solid silica surface. So, this is your solid surface. So, basically the 3 prime OH is, at, is attached via a an ester group into you do not have to remember possibly this you can write this that your this one is attached to a silica solid surface 3 prime OH via a linker L. And this as I said the bases need to be protected in the next I will tell you what are these protection group, protecting groups and here what you have this 5 prime OH is protected as a DMT group dimeth dimethoxy trital group this is what is dimethoxy trital trital is nothing but divide of this OCH 3 in this case there are two OCH 3 groups. So, that is called dimethoxy trital and this is hooked to a solid surface. So, this can be this can be bought from the chemical companies or to starting point is this dimethoxy trital protected 5 prime OH and the base protected. Now, I will tell you what are the protection groups the general protection groups of bases is nothing but NHCOR. So, you do either benzoylation or you do some some acetylation in some cases you can uh, you can use benzoyl in some cases there are aliphatic uh, aliphatic acyl uh, groups also are there. Okay. And you also have this 3 prime OH which is for the starting point is that is attached to the silica surface. Okay. So, next thing what you do the next thing is achha, this is the protection I was talking about that if it is adenine then the adenine is protected as benzoyl 
if it is guanine that is protected as uh, isobutyl oil, this is isobutyric acid derivative and your cytosine also is protected as benzoyl and thymine does not need any protection. These are the usual ones. Okay. Now, as I told you last time I showed you that this 3 prime OH is attached to silica, base is protected and this is protected as DMT. So, the first step what you do you because DMT is dimethoxy trital and trital groups fall off uh, in presence of any uh, an acid not aqueous acid usually they use trichloroacetic acid here I showed dichloroacetic acid that means it has to be little bit uh, stronger than acetic acid you know that attachment of halogens to the alpha carbon of acetic acid that increases the strength of the acid. So, you add this acid in some books it is written that this is trichloroacetic acid, uh, but dichloroacetic acid is also possible. So, what it does it it deep protects the DMT. Okay. So, it deep protects the DMT. So, the question is so first step is deep protection of DMT the dimethoxy trital question is what is the mechanism then how is it deprotected? So, that question we have to sort it out, sort out. And the second is now you see that you can have another component, another nucleotide which you want to join to this to this 5 prime OH. Now, this nucleotide look at this, this also has base, and as I said, if it is AGC that will be protected as the uh, as the um, acetyl or benzoyl groups and then this is DMT again the 5 prime which is protected as DMT and this is interesting the 3 prime which is now is attached to a phosphorus and this compound phosphorus is attached to uh, an amine group a tertiary amine group and this is also attached to uh, the other group is is called cyanoethyl cyano cyanoethyl group okay so this is cyanoethyl and this is diisopropyl amino and the whole thing if a phosphorus is attached to usually if it is attached to three oxygens that is called a phosphite okay phosphite if one of the oxygen is replaced by a nitrogen then that is a phosphor phosphoramide so that will be called a phosphoramide or phosphor actually phosphoramidite phosphor phosphoramidite midite so this is a, phosph a, a a phosphorus acid amide okay because h3po3 is the phosphorus acid and that is converted to the amide so that is known as phosphoramide uh, but uh, the this is correct name is phosphoramidite also you can say phosphoramide i think they are uh, same, but in the in the books you will write you will have this name nomenclature phosphorum midite. Okay. Now, what happens that already you have made this as the free wage okay. and this one is attached 5 prime is protected and 3 prime is attached to a phosphorus which has a very good living group because the diisopropyl amine in presence of a proton source will be protonated and as it is protonated it wants to leave because the oxygen lone pairs are there. So, the oxygen lone pairs can fly and kicks out the protonated form of this isopropyl uh, isopropyl group that means, you are kicking out isopropyl amine. Okay. Now, the acid group the slightly acidic group that is used is a tetrazole. So, in tetrazole this hydrogen is quite acidic and it is believed that this hydrogen protonates the nitrogen of this. So, this becomes N H plus and then this oxygen goes here this uh, diisopropylamine goes out and this oxygen becomes plus and then this free wage 
attacks this phosphorus and forms the uh, forms the this is phosphite bond because now you do not have that plus 5 state of phosphorus I said this is phosphite. So, now you have phosphorus oxygen oxygen oxygen. So, this is a lower oxidation state of the phosphorus. So, the mechanism um, is like this that you have O P n isopropyl and I said that this becomes positive and this is O cyanoethyl. Okay. And once this is protonated, then possibly there is this oxygen lone pair will help the expulsion of the free amine and that will become. So, this is base, I do not write base, these are this is a base and this is the remember this 5 prime which is protected as uh, 5 prime which is protected as d m t okay, this one and then you have this free wage on the other component that is your starting point which is attached to the silica and now that comes and attacks this phosphorus the 5 prime wage and resulting in the formation of this phosphite. I hope this is clear. So, this is your coupling stage this is called phosphoramide uh, phosphoramidite method and this was the uh, discovery. Uh, made by or this strategy was developed by uh, an Indian born scientist named Professor Hargobind Khurana. So, he was the first person to develop the synthetic protocol of uh, this nucleo uh, oligonucleotide, but this is still not oligonucleotide it is now what you have is protected this is again shown here. So, after the first coupling you have base protection you have base protection unless they are uh, thymine and you have a DMT protected here and this is a phosphite and this the 5 3 prime which is attached to the silica. Now, you if you want to extend it to a tri nucleotide then you extend the step that means the next step will be basically you have to first oxidize it this is not the correct oxidation state of the phosphorus. So, first you have to oxidize it and then that oxidation is done with iodine THF water in presence of a base. Okay. So, the third step is uh, oxidation of the phosphorus plus 3 to plus 5 okay. and then the so, that gives you the correct uh, oxidation um, oxidation state of phosphorus, but still the groups are not this is protected one of the uh, the oxygen is protected still and this is protected as DMT. Now, if you want to extend further I have to add another one then what I will do I will take this DMT off generate the free wage and then add the DMT protected phosphoramidite uh, the phosphoramidite group is uh, attached to the 3 prime wage. So, now if you deprotect this that will become wage and that will attack another uh, another nucleoside which is having which is again protected as DMT and here it will be O phosphor amidite. So, O P and then N that isopropyl and here it will be cyanoethyl okay, CH 2 CH 2 C N and then in presence of tetrazole that tetrazole will protonate this and then this wage is going to attack here and so you get a trinucleotide in that sense. But suppose you want to stop at the so let us see that how can we make the dinucleotide. Okay. So, in the dinucleotide now you have all these protecting groups the 3 prime wage is attached to silica that is a virtually a protecting group and then this base may be attached by benzoylation the amine group may be uh, benzoylated this also may be benzoylated or acetylated and uh, this is also protected as DMT and this is also protected as the cyanoethyl. So, if you increase it further you can do that, but the last step will be very similar to this. So, again I repeat the first step is basically you take a DMT protected uh, DMT protected 
nucleoside and the 3 prime which you attach to the silica surface solid surface. Then you take the DMT off and add this phosphoramidite where the DMT is protected 5 prime which is protected as DMT. So, what you get is this one after the first two steps and the third step is you oxidize this phosphorus to the correct oxidation state and then you can repeat this if you want a larger number of oligonucleotides. But suppose you stop here that I want this dinucleotide. So, the next step will be just deep protection. You have to deep protect all these groups, you have to take the DMT, you have to take this group off and you have to take this group off and you have to take the, the benzoyl group that is present in the attacked in the basis which attached to the basis. DMT group I have already told you, you need acid, you need trichloroacetic acid or uh, dichloroacetic acid, some chloroacetic acid basically. And then these groups can be taken off by aqueous ammonia and water, basically water aqueous ammonia that means ammonia water. Okay. So, first is your acid that chloroacetic acid sorry C L C H not C H 2 C L 2 C H C O 2 H second is ammonia water and that cleans off everything. The DMT is taken off by this and then ammonia water since it is a basic condition that cleaves the here. So, that means it becomes a witch that takes up the benzoyl group at the uh, at the basis. So, the bases are free and also that takes this group off. Okay. So, the third is, um, so again just a repetition uh, that the third is basically oxidation and the fourth step is what is called deep protection, complete deep protection of the groups. If you want further extension, you have to only put the DMT off and then do the next coupling. Okay. Uh, so, in this case, it is actually this is ammonia water, but that is the second one. First one is the removal of DMT and that is the CHCO2H, something little uh, mistake here. Okay. And um, the question is what is the mechanism, how does it come? We know that RCO, RCO in H base that can come off with bases. And remember, if you look at the structure of say adenine, remember these amines are little bit uh, little special because if you have benzoyl here, um, if you have benzoyl here, so you know that is the structure of adenine, then the living NH has a stability, NH minus is stabilized by this by these two nitrogens, electron withdrawing nitrogens. That is why these benzoyl groups can be taken off very easily because these are good, they are not that strong like the aliphatic amides. Okay. So, they can be deprotected very easily. So, that is the, uh, achha, the this mechanism we have not done that the cyanoethyl, but this is not very difficult because this CH2 group, these hydrogens are quite acidic because of the presence of the cyanide. So, as you add a base, so then what will happen? This CH 2 H, one of the H's can be taken by OH minus and that goes in between these two carbon carbon and that comes out. So, leaving that is a phosphodiester and what comes out here is acrylonitrile. So, the byproduct is minus acrylonitrile, which can be which is a liquid and that can be, but since it is a solid phase, so you do not have to worry, you always wash the bead. Um, only the last point it becomes a, it, it is detached from the solid surface. So, we have uh, done the mechanism of this, only mechanism that is now uh, left is the oxidation of phosphorus by iodine, but that is not very difficult. See what happens when you have a trivalent phosphorus. So, what was there a P O and a cyanoethyl okay. CH 2 CH 2 C n and you have here 
um, another oxygen which come in from the 5 prime wedge and basically this is the this is the thing ok. So, when you added the iodine, the iodine is basically the phosphorus is is a nucleophile. So, that adds that attacks the iodine uh, one of the iodine and of the and because the weakness of the iodine iodine bond. So, one of the iodine is uh, kicked out as I minus. So, now the phosphorus uh, is uh, becoming. So, I can write here. So, this is phosphorus, then you have this O cyanoethyl and here you have uh, you have the attachment of the another 5 prime group and in this case you have I now the phosphorus is basically a plus. Okay. Then you have water because I said iodine THF water. Now, water will come and attacks this phosphorus because the phosphorus is positively charged. So, you get a phosphorus I am not writing this this is the cyanoethyl and this is the other chain and this is becoming I and OH okay. as the water comes it will just lose one hydrogen and now it becomes the phosphate by expelling the other iodine. Okay. The whole thing is driven by uh, one is that iodine iodine bond is weak, but the other important issue is that phosphorus is strongly oxophilic that means phosphorus oxygen bond is very strong. So, always phosphorus uh, you know that in, in all the reactions involving triphenyl phosphine. Uh, like your Wittig reaction or um, other azabitic reactions, the end product is triphenyl phosphine oxide. Okay. So, um, that oxide formation is very, very uh, predominant in, in phosphorus chemistry. So, that becomes the phosphate. So, that basically ends up the solid phase synthesis of uh, of oligonucleotides again just have a quick brush up what you do you start with a uh, with a solid uh, the 3 prime wedge anchored to a solid surface via a linker the 5 prime wedge was initially protected as DMT which is taken up by acid and then the you take another component that is uh, the 3 prime wedge is uh, attached to a phosphor amidate and then the 5 prime which is protected as um, protected as DMT. Now, in presence of a tetrazole it the amine gets protonated and there is coupling between the 5 prime wedge attacking the phosphorus attached to the 3 prime wedge. Okay. Now, and then you have to oxidize this phosphite into phosphate and then if you want further extension you take the DMT off from the top and then you do the same uh, repeat the same set of reactions. But finally, in the oligonucleotide when you have the desired length you take the DMT off with uh, trichloroacetic acid or dichloroacetic acid and then you add ammonia aqueous ammonia and that aqueous ammonia will take care of the deep protection of uh, from the silica surface as well as the bases which are protected and also uh, do not forget it also takes care of the cyanoethyl group which is coming deep protected as acrylonitrile resulting in the phosphodiester bond. So, this is the uh, current strategy to synthesize oligonucleotides of uh, now oligonucleotides various companies are there biotech companies are there they are actually supplying oligonucleotides of particular uh, particular base sequence which is required because you have seen in any uh, sequence determination and then there is another uh, molecular biology technique called polymerase chain reaction 
you need primer and this who is supplying this primer even if you know the sequences but you have to synthesize that so there are many companies where primers you can order the primers primers are nothing but oligonucleotides deoxy oligonucleotides okay so the companies supply that so lot of biotech companies now survive by just synthesizing oligonucleotides and sending it to different labs okay one important point to note that the in the enzymatic process or in the biological system the direction of synthesis or direction of attachment of one oligonucleotide to the other is from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. That means, the 3 prime which attacking the 5 prime phosphate triphosphate, but here it is the reverse it is the chain grows in the 5 towards the 5 prime direction. So, this is the 5 prime which attacking the 3 prime phosphor amidate that means, the 5 prime the 3 prime phosphor. Uh, the phosphorus attached to the 3 prime. So, it is just the reversal of that. If you remember the peptide chemistry that also happens from the carboxy end in the solid phase. So, there is similarity also in that. The solution phase you can do from the N to C direction or C to N direction you have both uh, possibilities, but for the solid phase you start from the carboxy end and make the peptides of desired sequence. Similarly, here for the oligonucleotide you do the same you do the reversal of the biological process uh, bi that means, the 3 prime which uh, is anchored to the solid surface and making room for the 5 prime which attacking the 3 prime phosphor amidite. Okay. Thank you.